Hi, I'm Dr. Rovetti. Uh, to answer the question, uh, do you have a rateable impairment of uh, your arm, which includes your shoulder, elbow, wrist, or hands, fingers, uh, let me show you what conditions do qualify for a rateable impairment. Um, starting with the hands, um, if you have uh, any type of uh, deformity of the fingers, such as a rotation or a, a, a fracture here that caused the finger to bend, that's a rateable impairment. If you have decreased range of motion of your fingers, and the easy way to tell that is you just uh, go like this with both fingers, like that. And if you have the injured finger is less than the uh, uh, uninjured hand, then that's probably a rateable impairment. And then um, also there, there, you can go even further, yeah, yeah. And then we check to make sure it's at least as straight on the injured hand, or and there needs to be a little bit of a uh, angle here. Again, compare it to the other side, uh, some people have uh, decreased range of motion of their fingers, yet it's the same on the other side, so it really doesn't qualify for an impairment. Um, also with the fingers, if, um, if there's numbness on the uh, tips of the fingers or the whole finger or half of the finger, uh, that's usually a rateable impairment. Um, and then with the thumb, uh, the motions of the thumb are, are going all the way this way, uh, and then this way, and then go like this, and that's an impairment, and then uh, also that, and of course the both thumbs there. Yeah, that's a way to check for the thumbs to see if there's a loss of range of motion. And those are rateable impairments. Obviously, if you have uh, uh, an amputation of part of the finger where you cut the tip off, uh, the way to figure out if you have an impairment rating on that is uh, you, we just measure how much of the finger is on the injured hand versus how much the finger is injured on the other, and if it's a a millimeter, even a millimeter off will, uh, will be a rateable impairment. Um, some of the lesser, most a little more or less common ratings for the uh, hands is if you have numbness on the half of your hand or on top of your wrist, that's a rateable impairment. Um, and as far as the hands and the fingers, that's pretty much it. Uh, a lot of people think if you have a loss of grip strength, that's uh, sometimes not a rateable impairment. There has to be certain conditions such as a crush injury uh, or an injury to a muscle that would cause the uh, grip strength weakness. Uh, but that, if that's the only problem people have, uh, they're probably not a rateable impairment. Now as far as the wrist, um, there's four motions of the wrist that uh, can cause a rateable impairment like this. And we just measure this, compare it to the other side. Uh, and then there's the other opposite of that, and see if it's any different. Uh, then there's uh, the uh, radial deviation, which is this angle here. Of course, compare it with the other side. And you know, that's kind of, yeah. All right. And then the uh, of course the opposite way. Uh, so if uh, if it's less on the injured uh, side than it is the uninjured, side, it's probably a rateable impairment. As far as the elbow, uh, if it's um, if it's straight or uh, in this case it's actually uh, hypermobile here, uh, that's not a rateable impairment. If, as far as you can go is just this, it's a, it's a rateable impairment. And then this one here all the way back and compare it to the other side. So if, it's, if one is less, it's probably rateable impairment. The other thing for the elbow is uh, turn your hand as far as you can that way. And the other way, yeah, those two. And of course, compare both sides. If it's different, then it's, it's probably a rateable impairment. Um, there is a, a nerve that gets trapped here that'll cause uh, numbness in uh, these fingers here and some weakness, uh, and that's a rateable impairment. Uh, get the uh, ulnar nerve here. And with the wrist too, you have the carpal tunnel syndrome, which obviously cause numbness in these fingers uh, here. Uh, so, and then the only other thing is the shoulder, and the best way to do a shoulder, go ahead and stand up, Mandy, um, is we're going to compare range of motion, go ahead and put both arms out, as far up as far as you can, so, and if it's decreased, then it's a rateable impairment, you can also go forward, and up, and that's another motion, uh, backwards, and that's uh, another one, and... Uh, there's one that we go like this and upward, should go about 80 degrees and about 80 degrees down that way. Sometimes this is uh, not quite 80 degrees, but then you have to compare the other side. And if the other side's uh, significantly more than 80 degrees, then that's a rateable impairment. 
And so those are the uh, most common impairments of the uh, upper extremity.